every single parent in that room at that point was hanging on to the idea that, that our child was the one that was taken to the hospital and what is their status. Maybe there, there's a chance that they survived. And so I remember raising my hand and saying um, to the governor, you know, what's the status of those children that were taken to the hospital? And keep in mind, this is the moment where everyone in the room is hanging on the idea and the hope that that is their child that he's about to answer for. And he looked confused by my question. Like, I thought you guys already knew this. And his response was, those children have expired. And that was the moment where we knew there was no hope that all of our children were gone. And I remember feeling overwhelmed and with no support, no emotional support whatsoever in that room for us, I just wanted to leave. And as I picked up my stuff, we talked to a police officer and walked out the door and I was met with wall-to-wall -wall photographers taking our picture. I had no idea they were even there. I had been in this room all day long and I remember feeling so violated that here they were taking advantage of this very tender moment to sell a paper or sell a story. And there was these firemen that saw us in distress and came over and started to push away the photographers and create a path for us just to get to our car. Obviously, the, the media attention um, was overwhelming, and our town was inundated with reporters, photographers. And so one of the things that, um, that our town decided to do was assign a specific person for each family, a state trooper, to park out in front of their houses to send away different reporters, um, which was a very, very um, necessary step. And I can tell you that because our family was the one exception. Our family, um, through just miscommunication, did not actually receive a state trooper that parked in front of our house. And so we were inundated with reporters and people coming to our door constantly, knocking and ringing the doorbell with gift baskets, wanting an interview with cameras right there, ready to go. Katie Couric and her crew parked right in front of my yard spontaneously, wanting an interview with us. You know, we had, we didn't get that protection that all the other families did. And so we understood from that experience how important it was to, um, to help support and manage that. Also, um, if the media doesn't get any information from the school when something like this happens, they're going to find it some way. So if it's not you delivering that message, they're going to go to whoever they can find who is willing to speak. And how accurate is that information? Usually not very accurate, which is why to this day, I still have to um, correct misinformation that was being reported early on um, with the coverage at Sandy Hook. So it's important that you, know, you be the voice in those situations that your school district has a voice and you are able to appropriately communicate the information that you need to to the media. And in these situations, they are at the highest risk for being injured or hurt. And in these situations, they are at the highest risk for being injured or hurt.